Welcome back to Aaron's Games. I'm Aaron, and this week we are ranking every single level in Fall Guys so far. Yes, today we're going to be looking at every single level of Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout that has been released so far. But before we get into the main body of the video, I want to talk to you about someone else that I think you should be following on the Twitter. It's Queenie Does Art, and she does amazing, cute little character artworks, including uh, she was watching the dice reveal video that I made a couple of weeks ago and drew this cute little goblin bard. How cute is that? She does accept commissions, so head on over to her Twitter to uh, send her an email and uh, get something made for yourself, because why not? <laughs> a few weeks ago I posted a survey on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook asking for inputs for ranking every single level of Fall Guys, because there are some that I really like, there are some that I really, really hate. So I thought, mm, let's see what everyone else thinks. Um, not a lot of people took part in the survey, but enough for us to get some interesting results, so uh, hopefully you may agree or disagree. Uh, for this week's video I have actually created a whole new mode uh, of display so we're going to go into presentation mode now so make sure you're sitting comfortably have you got your teacher and apple and uh, do pay attention won't you check it out this is presentation mode so i've spent most of the day putting all of the data into excel and powerpoint and uh, putting it into a fun format for you guys so we're going to go through every single level in full guys and i've said that about four times but that's what we're going to do uh, before that we should probably point out that full guys season four has just been announced and it's going to be uh full guys 4041 which seems to suggest some kind of futuristic slash retro slash 80s slash neon themed look Look, look at that artwork. How can you not love that? I love that. My neon heart is singing at the look of that. Uh, go on to their social media channels and check out the video because it's got a little tease of the new soundtrack as well. It is 80 synth. Oh, I love it so much. So yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, obviously, we can't rank these new levels because they haven't appeared yet, uh, but I am very excited to see what they do next. So here is the survey that I posted. It took me a long time to build in Google Docs and it was really worth it. I actually really quite enjoyed the process because I am a little bit of a data nerd like that. Um, so I asked for people's opinions based on three specific metrics for the game and then an overall score. So the metrics were uh, rating how fun the level is out of five, rating how difficult the level is out of five, and rating the potential for griefability out of five, i.e. how easy it is for other players to mess up your game. And then I asked for an overall ranking out of 10, uh, possibly considering the other metrics, but possibly just a kind of gut feeling overall of the level. Um, and so I've collated all of the data and let's look at the results now. We're going to start with the racing levels, of which there are many uh, in the game. Generally, the objective is to reach the finish line as fast as possible while avoiding obstacles along the way. Um, uh, these are the, the kind of bread and butter of Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. They tend to be the most uh, prevalent of the rounds that you will experience in the game outside of special modes which avoid them, for example. So let's look at the first level. So this is Big Fans. It was added in the Medieval update in season two. Um, essentially what it is is a series of fan-shaped platforms which rotate and a few kind of levels of stepping stones as you go along the way. Um, Ollie, Coaster Ollie wrote, feels a bit repetitive. That's right, it does. It is basically just fans. Um, it has changed slightly with the variations from season three which add actual fans into the big fans so you can be blown around um, as well as trying to avoid the uh, swinging bars and the, the rotating platforms. Also now some of the some of the platforms overlap where they didn't before um, but yeah in general it's a fairly re repetitive level it, it does one thing it's made of big fans and it does it well let's have a look at the scores so the average score for fun was 3.8 out of 5 yeah I kind of agree with that difficulty also 3.8 it, it, you can get a good run you can get a bad run it depends uh, obviously how people are doing uh, grief ability is a 3 because there is quite a lot of possibility for uh, players to grab you as you're trying to jump onto the next fan it can get very frustrating so three out of five is quite accurate there i think uh, leading to an overall rating of eight out of ten yeah it feels pretty good i wrote i i scored it an eight so uh pretty accurate on terms of what i thought in general 
Moving on to Dizzy Heights. Uh, this one is a series of rotating platforms. Uh, starts with a level playing field of rotation, uh, and then you climb up a hill with some balls flying down, and then you go over this, what you can see on the screen here, which is the raised level of spinning platforms. And you reach another spinning platform at the end, which has balls and or fruit, uh, and with the latest variations, spinning bars in. Um, relatively simple as a race level, um, just kind of getting used to the flow, making sure that you're following the uh, spinning circle platforms in the same direction that they're moving, generally is going to give you quite an easy time. Uh, so, fun, we have 3.6 out of 5, uh, difficulty 1.6 out of 5, because yeah, once you get the swing of it, it's really not that difficult, you just have to follow the directions that things are going. Griefability 2.2, it is generally a low griefing level, um, there are a couple of points where you can grief people, uh, particularly the Jump to the last platforms does have a little gap so if you grief someone just as they jump they will fall down that gap but other than that it's not really ripe for grief ability and the overall rating for this one is 7.4 slightly higher than my score of 7 uh, but pretty accurate for that level I'd say Next up we have DoorDash, uh, basically this is a running through a series of doors, Takeshi's Castle style, uh, some of the doors are real, some of the doors are fake and you'll just bounce off them. Um, Coaster Ollie says there's no skill lead needed, I would kind of agree with that, it is pretty much just luck, um, the only small amount of skill comes in with trying to jump through the doors, when lots of people are going for the same door it can be quite difficult. Um, we have seen variations recently which involve giant fans and Big Yeetus often makes an appearance at the end of this stage as well but other than that it's not really uh, particularly exciting um, there used to be an exploit where you could see the last three doors which one was the fake door because it was slightly shorter than the others but they have fixed that now so that's not a possibility anymore unfortunately so ranking that one out of fun is two out of five for fun it is a bit of a going through the motions type one and it can be quite unfair if you're doing well you get all the doors and then you get bottlenecked through one door it's you know you can go from quite high up the ranks to quite low down the ranks unfortunately difficulty 3.8 um i kind of agree yeah it, it is a bit kind of difficult to there's no way of knowing which door is real and which door is fake until you jump at it um and as i said the difficulty comes in when trying to go through lots of people at once it's, it's difficult grief ability 1.2 to be honest there's not really anyone trying to grief on this one um it is pretty much just get there as quick as you can because it is very tight at the finish line um it you know one millisecond can make all the difference in this one um the only technically potential griefing area would be right at the end if you're running directly behind someone if you tap the, the grab button you can pop them behind you and just get ahead of them um, but it's very minor in terms of the speed that the race is going so not overly something to worry about overall rating 4.6 yeah i'd agree i gave it a six um but in general it's not one of the best levels. It's not the worst, but it's not one of the best levels. And there goes a motorbike. Uh, <laughs> next up, we have Freezy Peak, which was introduced in Season 3, the Winter uh, winter Wonderland. I can't remember if they called it Winter Wonderland, but they should have. Um, and it's basically a sprawling climb to the top. There's a train going by now. <laughs> With lots of different obstacles you can kind of see on the map there on the screen. Uh, punchy hands, uh, flippy platforms, um, conveyor belts, fans, and then a spinning kind of pyramid of conveyor belts at the top um, it's quite a challenging one really um, and it does vary in in terms of where you start sometimes you can get a really straight start running right up to the line um, sometimes you have to go circumvent it and go up the uh, conveyor belts a little bit um, Ollie says one of the checkpoints is too far back uh, and it is um, so when you go up to the snowball curve round um, if you get launched off there you go right back to the start where the fans were just kind of, I don't know why I'm pointing um, <laughs> you can see the kind of semicircle shape with the flippy platforms you go right back there um, and it you know if you fall off there you've basically lost I'm not sure if they fixed it re more recently with an update because I to be honest, I don't tend to fall off. I'm either far enough behind that I don't win, or I'm, I'm through. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, one of the checkpoints certainly was uh, a bit too far back. I don't know if they fixed it or not. In terms of fun, four out of five. It is a pretty fun level. It's quite fast paced. Um, and it's got a lot of variety in it. There's no kind of sections of all the same stuff. It is good. And it's one of the tallest levels in the game as well because of the, the kind of 
uh, amount that you climb up, and obviously that hence reflected the name Freezy Peak. Uh, difficulty 3.8, it is quite challenging, um, and when you're not used to it, it can be really difficult and frustrating. Um, again, it does kind of depend where you start. Sometimes you get a better start than other times, but on the whole, it is quite challenging. Grief ability is relatively low, 1.8. Um, there are opportunities for you to grief other people, um, particularly on the curved climb where the punchy hands are a real danger. But it just doesn't tend to happen very often. Again, because it's a race, not many people are focusing on trying to grief others. They're just focusing on trying to get to the top as quick as they can. Uh, so quite a low grief ability, which is good. Uh, overall score, 7.2. Slightly lower than my score of 8. Uh, but yeah, pretty accurate, I'd say. Next up we have Fruit Shoot, which is basically one giant conveyor belt that, on an incline that you run upwards and lots of fruit gets pelted at you. There are occasional variations of this game where it's one type of fruit, where it's just melons for example, and there is a variation where it's all the balls in the game, so the um, the, the halftone balls, the rugby balls, the golden egg has been seen on this, on this round as well. Um, recently they've added two little big too little. Two big yeasts at the back of the round which um, kind of fling the fruit back up to provide an extra challenge um, but it also can be used by players to fling themselves up the ramp and try and get a bit of an advantage. Uh, generally the tactic is just run and keep running and try not to get hit by the fruit, try not to hit other people um, and get up to the top as quick as you can. Generally it tends to be seen in the later stages of the game as well. In terms of fun, 2.8 kind of middle of the road. It, I think it's really fun, but I also think it can be really frustrating, so I kind of do agree with the 2.8 rating with that one. Uh, difficulty 3.6, yeah, it is um, sometimes trying to get just get on the ramp and stay on the ramp is a bit of a challenge um, and yeah so I can I can agree with 3.6. Grief ability 1.2 again there's not really time for you to grief other people in this one. Um, there is potential if you're running behind someone to grab but generally that'll mess you up just as much as them so it's not really worth doing. Uh, overall rating of 4.8 I think that's a bit low to be honest. Um, I put nine for fruit shoot i do really enjoy it um particularly when you get a very nicely timed yeet up to the top i find that i've often flung myself crazily to the last section of the conveyor and that's fantastic get easy to get first place doing that um i really enjoy it but i can understand why people don't uh, next up we have Gate Crash, which is uh, misnamed, I think. Door Dash and Gate Crash should be the other way around, because this is one where you avoid doors, and the other one is where you crash through gates. I don't know, maybe they were intended to be the other way around. Who knows? Um, this one has a series of doors which kind of go up and down in uh, various timed intervals and you have to just run and avoid the doors and get to the end. There is a slight variation at the end where you slide down a slimy hill before jumping through the last set of doors. Can add a little bit of extra challenge, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that difficult. Uh, in terms of fun, 3.2, it's quite fun. Yeah, it's not overly frustrating, apart from if you get caught behind one of the doors and the little uh, donut tower is swinging across and just stopping you from getting away. But in general, it's quite an easy, uh, fun ride. Difficulty 2.4, yeah, about average difficulty, not difficult, but if you get put in a particularly difficult situation uh, just by chance, then it can be a bit uh, challenging. Grief ability is a two. Um, I've not really seen many people griefing on this level, uh, but I suppose the potential is there if you're trying to stop someone getting through the door at the right time. That could, particularly, that could potentially mess someone up quite a lot. Overall rating, 6.2 out of 10. Uh, I gave it a seven. So yeah, that's about right. I'd agree with that. A very itchy nose. I don't know why. <clears throat> Next up, we have Hit Parade, which is a kind of a mishmash sequence of obstacles all put together. First thing you have to do is get across some logs, and then uh, if you fall off the logs, you go up a slimy hill. Um, and then you get past like some spinning turnstile type things, and then you get past the swinging balls, as you can see there. And then finally, you have the donut towers going across. Quite a lot of variations available on this level. So you've got the swinging hammers, you've got the big thick bonkuses that replace the balls sometimes. You also get like spinning um, bars that are very bouncy, like uh, jump club instead of the turnstiles, which can be really frustrating. Um, but there's a lot of variation on this one, which is nice because it is basically quite a simple level. Uh, in terms of fun, 3.2 is quite fast. Um, it is fun. Uh, <laughs> fast and fun. Um, it's very colourful. There's lots of different colourful elements in it. And um, yeah, just generally quite fun. Difficulty 2.4. Now I would have put this a bit higher because if you don't get through the obstacles pretty much perfectly, then you're probably not going to get through. Um, it's... It, 
it's that sort of level where if you're slowed down even slightly, you're going to be to the back of the pack quite quickly. Um, so yeah, I would have put that a bit higher, but there we are. Uh, griefability 2.5. There is opportunity to grief on this one, um, particularly on that last slimy section when you're trying to avoid getting hit. If someone directly, deliberately hits into you, that can ragdoll you, cause you to hit one of the donut towers and you go flying. And it can send you right back to the start uh, of the ramp, If if particularly if the hammers are there. If you hit one of them hammers, you could be yeeted right back um, overall rating 6.6 6. uh, I gave it a 7 so yeah 6.6 6 is about right I'd say for that one Next up is Night Fever, another one of the medieval rounds, uh, another kind of gauntlet style. Um, you run up past some axes, you go across some spiky logs, which are notoriously quite challenging, um, down another slimy slide, and then across these thick bonkers uh, channels with the holes in the ground, um, and then up to the end with some drawbridges. There are, again, some variations that have been seen more recently in the 3.5 update with seesaws and fans and punchy hands making their appearances. Um, the thick bonkers have even been replaced with giant fans like the big fans level which actually I prefer but um, another level where there's a lot of different things going on and quite often you see big yeetuses appear um, here and there as, as you go as well. In terms of fun, 4 out of 5. It's quite a varied level. Um, it is really fun, nice and colourful as well. Um, I don't know why I keep saying colourful because the whole game is, is literally multicoloured. That's part of the, the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I quite like the purple colour scheme, so that, that plays into it for me. Um, difficulty of 3.6. Yeah, it can be quite challenging in places. Um, Again, if you get caught in the wrong way by some of the obstacles, that can set you back quite a lot. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to fall out of this level. And there are a lot of checkpoints that can set you back uh, to those each time. With the spinning logs which have the spikes on it, if you get past the first and don't get past the second, you have to go back to before the first, which can be frustrating at times. Griefability 2.4. Uh, yeah, generally quite low on this one, although I have seen people griefing uh, quite a lot on the line. Um, and the, the drawbridges tend to attract griefers as well. Um, um, but there, yeah, in general, 2.4 is pretty accurate. Overall rating of 7.8. Um, the average score was slightly higher than I gave it, so I put a 7. Um, but yeah, 7.8 is pretty good for that one. Next up, Seesaw. This is uh, a series of seesaws, hence the name. Um, tipping platforms that are affected by the players who stand on each side. Um, this one highlights that a lot of people don't really know how physics works and uh, it can be frustrating to get caught on a seesaw trying to jump to the next one but it's too steep you're going to slide off. Um, the first set of seesaws you cannot slide off but the rest of them if it gets too steep you will just fall off like something that falls. I can't think of a simile right now. <laughs> In terms of fun it is a three out of five. Um, yeah, it's it's quite a quick one. Um, if you get into the swing of it, particularly if you get out front, it's hard for other people to put you off. It can be really a nice, really easy, really nice, easy run to the finish line. Um, so yeah, good fun. Difficulty 3.4. Yeah, it is challenging in places, particularly as mentioned before, if the players ahead of you don't understand how seesaws work or aren't willing to help uh, unbalance the seesaw to get it back to level. Um, interestingly, the developers of the game recently removed the vertical seesaws variant uh, because it was just stopping too many people. Um, so seesaws going side to side is difficult enough. Having them going forwards, if one of them is up the wrong way, you literally can't jump onto it, you're stuck there. Um, so I can see why they got rid of that. Grief ability 3.6. I don't know what it is, but this one attracts a lot of griefers. Um, when you're trying to jump across to the other seesaws, you often find that people will grab you. Um, there are a lot of people who wait at the lines on this one to grab you. Uh, particularly on that last seesaw, they wait at the ledge, grab you as you're trying to jump forward, and you don't get up onto the ledge. You have to go right back to the start of that section. Really frustrating. So yeah, definitely a, a medium grief ability score there. Uh, overall rating, 6.4. Yep, yeah, I gave it a 6. Uh, so yeah, I would agree with that, 6.4 overall. Next up, Ski Fall. Um, it's, it's based on Ski Ball, hence the name, uh, not based on Skyfall by Adele. Um, it's a series of rotating rings with different score levels uh, rings, similar to we've seen in Hoopsie Legends, uh, but these ones are uh, scored by um, colour and value, so the bronzes are worth one, silvers are worth two, and the golds are worth five. Um, the idea being that you launch yourself down the ramp and jump through the rings, and score points on the way, and the first you have to get to 15 to qualify. Uh, Ollie has put on here that it is easier if you skip the wheels. Uh, yes, it is. There is a notorious tactic where you just skip the, the scoring wheels entirely, slide down the sides, and then at the last minute there's a ski ball kind of circle at the back. You can just about see it at the back, and in the middle of it is a gold ring. Slide down the sides of the level and 
pull yourself in and jump into that gold and you can do it in three runs very very quickly more and more people are cottoning onto this tactic now so it's not as unique as it used to be um, but there are still quite a lot of people who do go for the main scoring rings which uh, generally you can score higher on a single run going down but it is a lot slower so generally the, the quicker way is to go sliding down the side in terms of fun 4.2 it is a really fun level um, it's quite fast paced you slide down really quickly and you either make it or you don't but you're right back to the top just as soon as you finish anyway um, so it is really fun 4.2 I would agree Difficulty 1.8, that I think that's taking into account the fact that you can just slide around the sides and get the nice high scores really quickly. Um, to get through the, the rings on the, the actual scoring wheels is quite challenging, particularly the gold ones, that can be a bit difficult. But uh, yeah, 1.8 in general, difficulty is quite low. Grief ability is, um, I think this comes from the fact that if you hit into someone, they can really knock you off course. Because the whole platform of the level is made of ice, um, one little hit will send you flying in a different direction, can be difficult to control. I don't think it's it's prevalent that people are deliberately doing that. I certainly haven't seen it that way. Um, but there is the potential for us other people uh, to kind of ruin your flow of the game by just knocking into you, as we said. Overall rating, 8.2. Uh, yeah, I gave it a 9. So um, it is a quite high scoring round. I can agree with that. It is one of the best ones. Um, and a worthy addition. I'd like to see more like this. Uh, kind of arcade style, quick score the points as, as far as you can. It's great times. Next up, Slime Climb, the notorious uh, Marmite uh, level of the game. You either love it or you hate it. Uh, most players start off hating it, and I was one of those. I used to absolutely detest this level, but with practice I've got better at it, and generally speaking, nine times out of ten I can make it all the way to the top. It is a long series of challenges um, as you go up the hill, all racing against the slowly uh, rising slime, hence the name Slime Climb. Um, there's a good variety of obstacles. There's pushing platforms, there's uh, spinning logs, uh, spinning logs, spinning hammers, balls, logs, all kinds of things, and there's a lot of variations available on this level as well. So it is uh, one of those tricky ones that you never really know what you're going to get until you get it. In terms of fun, 3.6. Um, yeah, it's a challenging level, but it was also a real uh, achievement if you can beat it. Uh, so it is quite a fun one, I'd say. Difficulty, 4.2. I'd potentially have been inclined to put that a bit higher, um, but if, as I say, once you get used to the game, once you get used to how this level particularly works, it can be a bit easier than certainly at first seems. Uh, grief ability 4.8. Now, this is one of the most notorious areas for griefing, particularly right at the top of the level, because the, the last ramps are actually covered in slime. Um, so not only are you trying to avoid the obstacles, but you're trying to stay on the ramp. Um, if you have a player who grabs you on the slime and then lets you go, you tend to get catapulted backwards and that's really difficult to come back from so um, yeah very high grief rating because there are people who literally stand there just at the line just at the end of the slime to grab people and push them back and whether they push them so that they fall off the ramp outright or they just hit into one of the obstacles either way you're eliminated and it's very very frustrating so yeah 4.8 possibly i'd give that a 5 out of 5 for grief ability but 4.8 reflects the average and i can deal with that overall rating 6.4 yeah that's pretty accurate uh, i gave it a 7 I'm, i do enjoy it a lot more than i used to i'll i'll definitely say that Next up, we have the Whirly Gig, a series of propellers that spin very fast in various different ways, um, and um, you just get past them, basically. Um, <laughs> that's it. I don't, don't really need to say more than that. Um, it's, it's, I think it's a really fun one. The general score is 4.2. It is really high fun. Um, it's, it's nice to have the kind of spinning theme, like, in more dimensions than just flat um, so there's gates that you run through in terms of the propellers conveyors that take you past propellers and then uh, quite a lot of variations at the end with the different spinning bars and stuff um, yeah it's a fun level difficulty two i think when you start playing the game you might find it challenging uh, but other than that it's not particularly difficult uh, grief ability two there's not really that many opportunities for griefing apart from at the line as we've said previously um, the big fan right at the end um, sometimes you'll find players waiting behind it so even if you get through they grab you and you still fall down the gap uh, but in general there's not a lot of griefing that happens on this level so overall rating eight uh, pretty high um, i gave it a 10 i just really enjoy this one um, it's you know one of those ones that ticks all the boxes for me um, but yeah 8 out of 10 not bad at all 
tiptoe, uh, run across a series of platforms without knowing which one is which, kind of like in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where he has to solve the puzzle. Some of the blocks are real, some of the blocks are fake. Uh, you won't know until you step on them. Um, it's quite a quick one. It's I find it quite frustrating because players are reluctant to head forward they'd rather make someone else take the plunge which i can see why because once the final path has been revealed it is a mad dash to get across the line and sometimes this goes from 12 players down to six uh, so it's quite a quite a fiercely contested round fun 2.2 um yeah it can be fun to find the path but as i say most of the time you're going to be stuck in a mob of players trying to push everyone off into the next square without them having to step on it so i don't think it's that fun and obviously that's reflected in the score difficulty 4.4 um it is quite a difficult level mainly because of the way players behave on it um and it's very frustrating in that manner um there is the potential to find a big yeetus under the under the map somewhere and if you find it and get launched over the line that can be a really quick win i did have that once where i got pushed over into a fake tile and i thought i'd i thought i'd be eliminated hit a yeetus and was launched over the line five or six tiles back it was great grief ability 4.6 as we mentioned people are just trying to force players onto the next squares without themselves having to take them so the grief ability is quite a high one on this one overall rating 4.8 yeah i'd say that's about right i gave it a five in that I, it's a it's a tolerable level it's not awful but it's not definitely not one of the best um, then we have Tundra Run, uh, which is another one of the wintry levels. Um, it's a series of obstacles to climb and jump across. There's punchy hands, quite a lot of punchy hands, and then the flipping platforms towards the end. Uh, we've seen some variations lately where there are fans at the end rather than those platforms, uh, the flipping flipping panels, whatever they're called. Um, and um, yeah, so there's lots of different variations on this one. In terms of fun, four out of five, it's pretty fast paced. There's a lot of variety in this one, so I can agree with the four out of five on fun. Difficulty 2.8, it can be challenging in places, but in general, it's not that bad. Um, and grief ability 2.2, to. Again, this is one where you don't tend to find people are trying to screw you up too much because they're too busy focused on getting over the line themselves. Particularly with those flippers at the end of the level, if you don't hit those right, you aren't getting through. So generally, you're, you're focusing on trying to get on those in the right combination rather than screwing anyone else up. Overall rating, 7.2. Uh, I gave it a 6. I don't enjoy it as much, um, but generally it's pretty well received. Um, Lewis, who was one of the co correspondents on this, um, has only ever lost it once. Um, and it happened just after he said, you know, I've never lost this level. And then he lost. <laughs> Uh, but most of the time he gets through and he's had quite first place quite a few times as well. So yeah, well played. And finally we have Wall Guys. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't like this level. I really don't like this level because it relies on cooperation and no one in the game is playing that in this in this level because it's not a team game. No one is looking out for anyone but themselves and it can be a mad scram to get to some of those platforms and it's very frustrating. Um, fun, 2.2 for those reasons. If you get a nice clean run and you get across the walls quickly then it can be fun but generally it's quite quite annoying difficulty 4.8 again because the people are, other people are not looking out for anyone but themselves it can be really challenging particularly if a lot of people are jumping for the same block it's really difficult to grab hold of it and very annoying grief ability 4.6 yeah again people are just trying to knock you out of the way to get themselves forward I've seen people pulling blocks back away from the wall to stop people being able to use them. There's a lot of griefing going on in this level. I just don't like it. It's just not fun. Um, overall rating 4.4. I gave it a 2 because I really don't like it. Um, but yeah, it's not It's not a great level. Um, it relies on the grab mechanic, which is buggy. Um, and even with the variations, some, some of the variations include fans. Um, I don't really like it at all. <laughs> So 4.4 is pretty accurate. Moving on to the hunt, logic and survival levels. I've grouped these into one group because there's not enough of any of those individual categories to make a category of their own. There's two hunt levels, one logic level and four survival levels. So they all get grouped into one group here. There we are. Um, in the hunt levels, you're looking for a particular thing. In the logic level, you are uh, trying to find the right solution to something. And in the survival levels, you're just trying to stay alive. Basically, that's how it works. Uh, let's look at Hoopsie Legends. In this one, you are running around the arena 
looking for hoops that you can jump through and when you score six points you get put through to the next round. There are golden hoops available as you can see in the top right of that picture and they give you five points. Um, generally this is quite a, a, a fun one I think. Um, it can go on for quite a while because um, depending on how many of the hoops spawn it's quite a challenge to find them sometimes um, or if there's a lot of players it can be difficult to find one that you can get for yourself. Um, so yeah. It, it varies uh, a bit here and there on that one. Fun 2.2 for those reasons, as I've said, it's it's very variable level. Difficulty 3.8, it can be really challenging in places, particularly if there's a lot of people trying after the same uh, ring, but it also can be really quick to win if you find a gold and you're first to get it, then that's five points, that gets rockets you straight forwards, and uh, in often cases, if you've already got one or two rings, the gold will secure you the win. Um, so, you know, it's not the worst, but it is quite challenging. Grief ability 3.5, for mainly because there's a lot of people going for the same rings at the same time so there's a lot of uh, scrumming for trying to jump through the same ring that's why you get the grief ability score of that overall rating five out of ten i'd say that's about right i gave it a six uh, but in general five is pretty middle of the road and uh, appropriate for this level Next up, Tail Tag. Ugh, another one of my hated ones. I really don't like this level. The idea is that some players start with a tail, some players don't. The players without a tail need to grab the players with tails and try and steal a tail for themselves. With a minute and a half on the clock, you can start with a tail and hold it for most of the game and lose it in the final seconds, which can be really frustrating. Um, and also because of desync issues, you may be able to be grabbed from much further away than you think you can. And that can be really frustrating as well. So let's have a look at the scores for this notoriously pretty hated level. Fun 1.4. Yes, not surprising. It's not a lot of fun, um, particularly if you lose your tail in the last seconds. That's very frustrating. Difficulty 4.6. When you haven't got a tail, it's really hard to catch up with someone who does. And because everyone's running at the same speed, um, it can be really frustrating. You're relying on people to make a mistake, but with such an open arena, it is difficult to make a mistake. Um, but generally, if you're running away with a tail, again, you're trying to avoid people. It's it's difficult because they're following your every move. It's just, I just, it's just difficult. Uh, grief ability 4.4. The whole idea of this game is to grief others and steal their tails. Uh, hence the high griefing score. Overall rating 2.8. Yeah, not surprised. I gave this a 1 because it really frustrates me. Um, it's so, so annoying and the tail mechanics don't really work that well in the game uh, because of desync and um, the grabbing issues combined with that. It's, it's not great. It's not a great level, you guys. Uh, then we have the logic level, perfect match, um, which is uh, you get shown a series of uh, tiles which have fruits on them and then after a 10 second countdown you are, cho you are asked to stand on a tile with a particular fruit on. Um, so in this case there's the cherries and the grapes and then it flashes up. Um, Ollie's written the difficulty times 100 if the spinner appears. So a recent variation has put one of the spinning bars in the middle. So as well as trying to find the right fruit square to stand on, you also have to dodge the spinning bar. Um, and that can be really challenging. So fun, 3.6. I really enjoy this one. Um, as I say, it's the only logic level in the game. I really think they do need more puzzle type levels um, because this is this is great fun. Um, difficulty 3.4 so the first one there are two fruits in the second one there are four fruits and in the last one there are six fruits which can be difficult to find all six um, so it's a case of memorizing them really quickly and then finding the right one uh, grief ability 4.2 there is a lot of potential for griefing on this one because if you grab players you can catapult them particularly at the edges of the map or when the uh, the wrong blocks fade away if you get grabbed and catapulted that's you out of the level that can be really frustrating overall rating 6.4 uh, I gave it an 8 so 6.4 is a bit lower than I would have scored it but uh, that's about right I reckon um, some people don't really like this one it can be tough with the memory uh, particularly if you don't find all of the fruits on the six uh, fruit uh, round level round whatever um, it can be difficult there Next up, Block Party, which is a survival level. Basically, uh, panels come flying towards the players on a wide platform and you have to try and avoid or jump over them as they come along. Um, it's quite fast paced, um, but it can be quite challenging if there are a lot of players. Um, and then I think it's another 90 second round. Um, it gradually gets harder and harder and the, the path gets narrower towards the end as well. Um, in terms of fun, 3.4, um, it's not a bad level. Um, not bad at all, I'd say. It's just, it depends on who you're playing with, whether you get really bad griefer in there. Difficulty 3.6. Um, 
At some point you get these planks that you have to jump over and if you ragdoll and get hit by another plank it can be really difficult to get back up after that. So yeah, I can understand why it's 3.6 on difficulty there. Uh, grief ability 4.4. There are a lot of griefers on this one. People who will stand and grab you and try and force you into a platform that's moving and if you get ragdolled there you're getting carried off the stage. Particularly at the end uh, when the planks are going or when you've got that tiny little corridor to go through. Um, interestingly, I've seen people who, uh, there's a tactic where you pile on to a group of people there, jump and you can reach the top of the platforms that you can see on the side there. Um, so that's a nice easy route to the finish. I've never managed it, but I've seen quite a few people do it. Overall rating for this one is 6.4. Uh, I gave it a 6. Um, it's not, it's, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. It does depend on who, whether you get a griefer or not, but in general, it's not bad. Next one is Jump Club. I really enjoy this one. It's like a swinging um, a swinging bar that you have to jump across, as we've seen in programs like Total Wipeout and stuff like that. Um, it's just a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. There are variations which introduce uh, different numbers of bars and also the uh, cannons that fling fruit at you as you go. But in general, it's pretty simple. Just jump on a spinning bar. Try not to get, because the top bar is spinning at the same time, try not to get wedged between two. That can be, get you out straight away. Um, but yeah, fun. 4.4. It's a really fun one. It's generally quite quick. Um, never lasts very long. Motorbike. And um, it's, it's relatively simple to play as well. Difficulty 2.2, as reflected there. It's not a difficult game. It's just timing and avoiding other people. Uh, grief ability of 3.8, uh, yeah, because there is potential if you get grabbed just as the bar's coming, then you can get uh, launched into the bar, the bar will send you away. Um, but generally most people are trying not to do that, but there is that potential, so it is quite a high grief ability score for that reason. Overall rating is 8, um, I gave it an 8, so I think most people gave it an 8 on that one. Um, it is a fun level, it's, you know, gets an 8, fair enough. Next up we have Rollout, which is a uh, series of spinning um, rings, essentially with different obstacles like walls and donut towers and gaps, and they rotate in different uh, directions and you have to just stay on for as long as possible, basically. Um, variations have included uh, fruit that gets flung at you, and also they've taken away the N2 ring, so it's just a three ring variation changes it up a little bit. Um, fun, three out of five, yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, if it's got a lot of players, it can sometimes take a long time to get through, um, and particularly when there's 22 to be eliminated, it can take a while, um, but in general, it's pretty fun. Difficulty, there's not really that much to it, it's just kind of keeping track of where you're going. It's important to move the camera on this one so you can see where you're going next and try and not fall down any gaps, uh, but in general, it's not that difficult. Grief ability is quite high though, because a lot of one tactic that a lot of people use is to grab and force you to, you, when they let go, as, if, as we've said before, you get catapulted. You get catapulted and you can go down a gap, or you can hit a wall or something will throw you off. It's quite a high grief ability score. Uh, Lewis uh, it plays grief on this level quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> overall rating 6.6. .6. I give it a 5. Pretty much an average level. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It's not really that exciting. So 6.6, .6, not bad. Snowball Survival, another relatively new level uh, introduced with the Winter 3.5 update. So it's only been out a week and a half or a bit longer than that. This is one of the newest levels in the game. Um, basically, you're in a giant bowl avoiding these massive snowballs which will send you flying if they hit you. The pink tiles don't go anywhere, but the blue tiles do uh, and they can be removed from the game. So if you get knocked into them, you are going out. Um, yeah, it's I quite like it. It's quite, quite fun. Um, 2.8 on the fun score, partly because people haven't had the opportunity to play it very much but partly because it is a bit challenging difficulty four out of five because if those balls hit you there's basically nothing you can do to survive it's just a case of trying to stay away from them again controlling your camera as much as you can to try and see them and uh, avoiding other players trying to grief. Um, on the subject of griefing, there's not a lot of griefing that happens, mainly because everyone's running around trying to avoid those snowballs and not really focusing on other people, um, only looking after themselves. But there are players who do deliberately knock out the tiles, so there is potential for griefing in that sense. Uh, people deliberately making holes in the map, as we've seen on lots of other levels, as we will find out. Overall rating, 5.4. I gave it a 5. Again, at the time of writing, I don't think I played it as much. I played it a few more times in the last couple of days um i do enjoy it it's just not the best it is a very simple level 5.4 sounds about right 5.4 out of 10. 
Then we come on to the team levels. So on these levels you are placed in a team, hence the name, um, and you work together towards a common goal. Um, there is a bit of criticism with these team levels in that if you get a bad team, you may you may do quite well in the game, but you still get eliminated. That's the way it goes. I quite like them. It gives a bit of variety to the game. So let's look at Egg Scramble. Uh, in this one, you uh, run towards a central platform and grab an egg. The normal eggs are worth one point. The golden eggs are worth five. And you put it in your area of the map in your little basket. Um, other teams can run into your basket to try and steal your eggs. And obviously, you can run into their basket to steal theirs. It is a bit of a scuffle at times, hence why it's called Egg Scramble. In terms of fun, it is a 2.4 out of 5. Um, it, I don't really enjoy this one. It's it's a bit bland. Uh, because it's a direct struggle, as it were, it can be a bit frustrating at times as well, particularly if there's a lot of people fighting over the same golden egg, for example. Difficulty 2.8. In general, the game is not that difficult. It's just a case of grabbing an egg and getting it to your base and trying to escape with other people's eggs if you're stealing from their base. That's it, really. Um, oh. Griefability 4.2, again because the game is designed that you're trying to grief others to get them to release their eggs, um, there's a lot of griefing happens in the game. It's not game ending in this sense, but um, if a team is low on eggs and the other two teams are ganging up on them, then there's pretty much nothing they can do to escape and uh, get all the eggs back because most players will be running against them so that can be quite game ruining in that sense overall rating 4.8 i gave it a six you know it's it's not bad i don't think it's that bad but you know opinions divided uh, next up we have Egg Siege, which is a variation of Egg Scramble with a bit more interesting of an arena. Um, introduced with the medieval update, it has drawbridges, it has swinging axes, um, and it has a more fortified uh, basket as it were. It's got ramps leading down, little gates that you have to push your eggs through. Um, and generally the idea is to get your eggs in there and then defend them rather than go and steal uh, everyone else's eggs. Um, although, what would you be defending if no one stole? But yeah, there's more. There's more of a kind of protection and um, uh, sabotage element to it than Egg Scramble, which is a fairly flat playing field. This has got more dynamic levels. Um, fun 3.4. It is better than Egg Scramble. Um, it is more enjoyable because of those variations. It is a bit more of a challenge. There is also more um, scope to defend. Difficulty 2.8. Again, it's just kind of grabbing eggs and keeping hold of them. Really, there's not much more to it. Grief ability slightly lower on this one with 4.2. Um, again, it's about griefing, um, trying to steal others' eggs while looking after your own. That's the name of the game. Uh, overall rating, 6.2. Uh, I gave this one an 8. I do enjoy it far more than Egg Scramble. Um, it's quite a high scoring level for me because I like the variation of the medieval. And of the medieval levels, I think this is the most medieval out of them. Um, so I quite enjoy that. Next up we have Fall Ball, um, otherwise known as the only game of football I have ever enjoyed. Um, I really like this one. <laughs> um, it, they recently had a Fall Ball Cup where all of it was just Fall Ball, Fall Ball, Fall Ball, and then a final. Um, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, I don't know why, I just just like it. Giant balls, uh, lots of beans scrambling for it. Um, again, it's it's because it's a team game, you might get stuck on a bad team, you might have a good team, um, you might have a team that is very good at defending or very bad at defending. It can be results can vary quite wildly on this one. Oh, I've skipped backwards. Uh, full ball, fun, 3.8. Uh, it's quite a high fun level, I'd say. Um, the stakes aren't that high, um, and you know it's quite a you know work together with your team and score goals and defend the other team's goals. Difficulty 2.6, it's not overly challenging. Um, the main challenge for me is trying to remember not to jump and dive, just dive. For some reason when you dive, it gives you more power on the kick, as it were. Um, and I've more recently had lots of success with kicking from almost near the home goal and getting it all the way over to the, the away goal and doing quite well that way. Grief ability, 1.6. Um, there is a little bit of grabbing that goes on, but generally people are focused on controlling the balls, so there's not a lot of griefing going on. Overall rating, 6.8. I gave it a 9 because, as I say, I really do enjoy this one, um, but it can be a bit divisive. Some people really don't like it. I know that. Next up we have Hoarders, which is similar to Full Ball in that um, it involves giant balls. <laughs> That's the only similarity. Um, the idea in this one is to keep the balls in your particular area um, and try and get balls out of other, other teams' areas. 
pretty much. Um, fun 2.2 is quite a basic level. I don't think it's that enjoyable, um, and that's reflected in the scores, as you see. Difficulty 3 out of 5. The balls can be quite hard to control. They're not as easy to control as the full ball balls. For some reason, the physics is different. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it's not as much fun. Grief ability, 2.8. Again, if one team is down and everyone else gangs up on them, it can be really hard to rescue. But in general, it's just a case of struggling over the balls. It's part of the game. It's not a very high griefing. Um, you're expecting that sort of gameplay to happen. Overall rating, 5 out of 10. I gave it a 6, um, but in general, pretty average. Yeah. Next up we have Hoopsy Daisy, um, which is a team game where you're jumping through the hoops. Again, white hoops worth one and gold hoops worth five. Um, Lewis wrote, it's better with the fans. So a recent variation has replaced the spinning platforms uh, in the middle with giant fans. And there's more flipping platforms. I actually don't like it as much with the fans. I prefer it with the spinning platforms, but I think the fans are... It's because on those variations, the hoops are quite high in the air. It's really difficult to control um, going the right way and getting through the hoops. So I don't like that one as much, but hey, each to one's own. Um, and the idea is to get um, the highest number of rings as you go. Um, Fun 2.6, it's a fairly average game. It does depend on where the hoops spawn, as we've said earlier with Hoopsie Legends. Um, and again, because of the fact that it's a team, uh, you can be screwed up by your team not doing as well as you. You can get loads of rings. If they don't, you're out, basically. Uh, difficulty 3.4, um, yeah, because you're hunting for rings again, it's quite a challenging one. Um, especially the gold rings when they pop up they tend to be in more um, harder to reach places grief ability 2.4 essentially you're all fighting over the same rings so that's where the grief ability comes from in that sense um, and an overall rating of 5.2 I gave it a 7 yeah uh, uh, you know average it's not not brilliant um, not awful but not brilliant Next up we have jinxed which is kind of like viral tag um, basically stay uninfected as long as you can uh, a nice uh, summary for the pandemic of 2020 and 21 um, it's a team game it's a half and half team game so it does eliminate a lot of people at once um, and basically whoever has the last player left standing without being caught by the jinx their team wins um, in terms of fun it's a three out of five it's, it's a quite nice variant on the levels um, in that it's an it's a different mechanic this is the only level that uses the the jinx mechanic um, and yeah it's pretty fun difficulty three out of five um, as the game goes on it gets harder and harder to avoid people who have the jinx um, and it just it just goes really quickly and again because you're either on the winning team or not a 50% elimination rate is quite high grief ability 2.4 again it's the name of the game you, you did the game is designed to push push players to grief each other it's not really game breaking other than if you have a lot of people chasing after the same person i suppose but it's to be expected so hence the low grief ability score overall rating six i gave it a six so yeah spot on in terms of how i thought about it Next up we have Penguin Pursuit, where you run after three little motorised penguins and uh, try and hold on to them for as long as possible, kind of like a capture the bag style gameplay. Uh, Lewis, writes, Lewis writes, it's hard to score, I've only played it twice. Um, it was a rare one, uh, even though it was brought in with the uh, winter update, it didn't tend to come up very often until they fixed its uh, probabilities and it starts to come up more. It is still quite rare because it works best with lower numbers of people, um, so it is a rare one even still. Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, really. The, the penguins are easy to hold on to, but then you get a lot of people trying to grab the same person with the penguins because there are only three. So it does concentrate the, the action a little bit quite, quite uh, significantly. Um, fun 2.8. Um, it is quite fun, uh, but it can be frustrating when you're when you're unable to get the penguin at all. And um, this team, one team gets way ahead. That can be very frustrating. Difficulty four. It is hard to hold on to those penguins um, and get around the map because a lot of it's slippery. It is quite a small map as well, so that can be very frustrating in that it's very hard to get away, as it were. We have seen some variations coming in with hammers rather than the spinning turnstiles, but in general, it's it's quite a challenging level. Grief ability 3.4. Um, 
The teams generally will protect each other as you're going around because there's three penguins. If you've got one of them, generally you'll find teammates along with you, protecting you. But that also means if you're trying to steal a penguin, you've got a lot of players defending against it. Um, so there is a lot of potential for, for griefing there, holding players back, not really letting them get forwards through to the penguin. Um, can be very, very, very frustrating. <clears throat> Overall rating, 5.4. Uh, I gave it a 7. Um, I do quite like it in terms of what it brings to the game, something different, a new mechanic. Um, but I can understand why people don't like it and I think we had a couple of low scores purely because people haven't played it very often um, so that'd be why next up we have Rock and Roll oh, I love this level I just really really enjoy the way it works it's a team game but um, for, the, for the most part you're separated into kind of lanes um, so it's just about your team working together specifically on a section and then getting rolling down to the end um, fun 4.6 out of 5 very high on the fun rating i don't know why it's just a really enjoyable mechanic rolling a ball up a hill um, and then down the hill again to to the end difficulty wise 2.6 it can be a bit challenging um, if you haven't got a team that all are working together sometimes it's hard to get the ball up the hill quickly and then if there's people um, waiting down the bottom it can be difficult to coordinate getting the ball right down to the goal um, in terms of grief ability that's where the high score comes in once you get down to that second section, it's very common these days to see uh, groups of players trying to mess up the other team's balls and hold them at the platform further up, stop them rolling down the hill, stop them winning. Um, we have started to see this level time out quite a lot with the winners being determined on which ball is closer to the goal. Uh, generally, when you get first place, it's, it's very easy to do, and it's the second two teams fighting over second that uh, you see a lot of griefing on. Uh, overall rating, 9. Even with the difficulty and the group ability and to take it into account, it's just a really fun level. I gave it a 10, because I think this is my favourite level in the game. It's very enjoyable, um, and there was a time where it didn't come up very often, but uh, it seems to be more prevalent again these days, which is very welcome. Then we have Snowy Scrap, another level of the Winter uh, Season 3 update. This is uh, similar to Rock and Roll in that you start off uh, in separate channels, uh, but this time you're rolling a snowball to try and gather as much snow as you can and build it up to 100% in size, um, and then you win first and second teams to do that, get qualified, and the third one doesn't. Um, in terms of fun, it's a 3.6. Again, it's quite a nice mechanic. It's something we hadn't seen before, rolling balls around to gather snow. The arena is huge. Huge, um, and there's lots of snow around, so it's quite a, quite a fun one to roll your ball around. It's quite satisfying seeing the ball grow as you go. Difficulty three, it can be challenging again if your team is not all working to the same um, plan. Sometimes you'll find that your teammates are trying to go a different direction. That can be a bit frustrating at times. Um, and sometimes, like I particularly like to push the ball towards the hammers, which then uh, fling it across the arena, it rolls across the middle, gathers loads of snow. Some players don't like doing that and will push away from the hammers, so it can be really frustrating if you've got a difference of opinion in that sense. Grief ability 3.8. Um, more recently we've seen players trying to screw up the other players and stop the snowballs in the tracks. If you get particularly coordinated groups of players doing that, it can be almost impossible to move your snowball any further if they lock it in that way so it is quite a high grief rating in terms of that uh, part of the game overall ranking 6.8 uh, i gave it a 7 so just below what i would have scored it um and yeah it's it's pretty fun it's not the best but it is pretty fun Next up we have Team Tail Tag. This one is, is quite rare because it's the only level in the game that has four teams, so it requires a number of players divisible by four, so you don't tend to see it as often, uh, this one. Uh, but essentially it's Tail Tag, but with four teams, uh, red, yellow, green and blue, all trying to get as many tails as they can uh, for the team, and the team with the lowest number of tails gets eliminated at the end of the time. Coast Rolly writes, the only tail round I can just about endure. This is definitely the best of the tail rounds. Um, even with the bad tail grab mechanic, um, this is the most fun. There are variations which add a lot more hammers. There are variations which add f uh, fans here and there. Um, and there is a really good tactic on this one which I like. Is to, so You see the little ramp on the left, you hide behind it, uh, wait for someone to come around on the conveyor belt jump out and grab the tail and run away again. It's a really easy way to get in the tail. Um, and because there's so many players usually in this round, it's, it's just generally quite easy to get hold of a tail if you lose yours. And because you're not the only one on your team, 
it kind of reduces the impact of losing your tail as well which is which does help um fun wise it scores a three out of five i'd agree with that it's not the most fun Again, it's a tail grabbing mechanic. It can be really frustrating if you get and lose tails in quick succession. Difficulty, it's a 3.2. Again, because of the grabbing mechanic. And the grief ability, 3.8. It's quite a high grief one, particularly if you're using my tactic of hiding behind a wall and then popping out. Um, but it's the name of the game, so it's not game breaking, but it's, you know, you're designed to uh, screw the other players up. There you go. Overall rating, 6.4. Uh, I gave it a 7. So, yeah, about right. But again, quite a rare round, so not often seen um, in the rotation anymore, which is a shame because, it, as we've said, it is the best of the tail rounds. Now we come on to the final levels. So after you've got down, whittled the, the players down from 60, you get to a, a final level um, of there are six finals currently, and then you are uh, battling for a crown. So let's have a look at those now. First up, Full Mountain, arguably the archetype of the game. Uh, you have to run up a mountain of obstacles and get to the top and grab the crown as quickly as possible. Um, a lot of variations on this one and a lot of kind of leaving it to chance. You're running up and trying to avoid the spinning turnstiles, the blows, the donut towers, the spinning hammers. Sometimes you'll get a yeetus at the bottom of that conveyor belt that you can see there, but generally it's not a good idea to go for it. Um, and then it's just a mad scramble to the top. In terms of fun, it's a 3 out of 5 because it is quite quick. Um, it is quite hit and miss and does rely on chance quite a lot. Um, but in general, I've had quite quite good success on it, so I quite enjoy it in general overall. Difficulty 3.8, particularly if there are more obstacles on it. Um, quite a lot of the donut towers, when they're going quite fast, that can be really difficult to get past without getting hit. And if the balls just, if you have an unlucky run, you get hit by balls a few times, you're at the back of the, the pack, you're not going to have much chance of getting the crown. That said, when people get up to the top, you have to grab the crown, and because it's raising and lowering, sometimes you can miss. So even if you're not first up to the top, you can still get a chance, because when you fall without grabbing the crown, the conveyor belt will push you right to the back, um, and then other players will potentially get a chance. There used to be spinning hammers at the top of the, the level as well, which made it challenging, but they've taken those out. Um, I don't know why, because that did make it more challenging to get to the end, and it stopped people just waiting there, but they are gone. They've confirmed as not coming back, uh, those ones right at the top. Grief ability 2.6. Because it is a race, there's not really many people who are going to be trying to grief. That said, it's not impossible. I have seen it where people grab and try and stop the other players, particularly using that quick grab technique to just pull someone back and get them uh, behind you can be really devastating. If you're, if you're in the lead, suddenly you're second place. That could be all the difference. Overall rating, 7.2. I give it a 7, so I would agree with the 7.2. It's a fun final. It's not a bad one. Next up we have Hexagon, you uh, traverse a series of platforms which disappear when you stand on them, uh, the idea being stay alive as, po as long as possible and stay alive longer than anyone else. Um, there are a few different tactics on this one, some people like to drop all the way down to the bottom and clear the lowest level and make it really dangerous, some people like to jump from the very highest level, if you've got a small amount of players you can jump from the starting platforms and stay up on the top level for quite a long time if you're lucky enough. Um, uh, it just varies on and basically chance onto how players are going to play, whether you can survive that long or not. Um, in terms of fun, 3 out of 5, it is a pretty fun level. Um, it can be frustrating at times because if you get knocked down, you can fall through levels faster than you'd like. Uh, but in general, it's pretty fun. Difficulty is quite high, 4.2. Because you're racing other people and they're all trying to avoid falling down the tiles, um, and some people are deliberately clearing tiles as quickly as they can, it is quite a challenging one, uh, particularly when it gets down to the wire and there are not that many tiles left. Trying to find a route to stay alive um, as long as possible can be really challenging. Grief ability 3.4. As I mentioned earlier, there are people who will fall, deliberately fall down and try and clear as many tiles as possible uh, or isolate themselves a little space or try and run ahead of players to knock them out. There's a lot of griefing tactics involved in this one. Uh, it has to be said. Overall rating 6.2. Um, I started off hating this level, uh, but I've gotten to, to know it a bit better and I do rather enjoy it. So I gave it an 8, uh, but in general um, it's not a very widely um, well regarded level. So 6.2, probably reflective of the wider community in terms of this game. 
Uh, then we have Jump Showdown, which is like Jump Club, um, except the bar speeds up as you go, and the platforms fall down as you run around. So uh, gradually it goes from, I think it's 10 different platforms down to just two, um, and then it's the case of jumping over the bar, avoiding those double bar moments, and trying to stay on as long as possible. Um, fun, 4.6, it's you know definitely a lot of fun. It is a real challenge, particularly if they're with one of the variations recently, there was a fan that goes around the edge and can blow you off the stage quite quickly. Um, difficulty 3.6 It's not overly difficult but sometimes if you're not on the right platform um, you can get stranded and then you know you have nowhere to stand um, and as the bar gets gets faster and faster it does get difficult you have to time it right. Um, grief ability rating is quite high on this one because you tend to find um, not necessarily at the start of the level but when the bar's going fast when there's fewer players uh, you'll find often that one one or two of the players will be griefers they'll grab you and then similar to jump club try and launch you into the bar the bar will send you flying and you're out. Um, one kind of benefit from that though is that usually if someone tries to grief you it's hard for them to stay alive as well so either both of you will go or sometimes Times it has been known the griefer gets launched off and you stay alive that is fantastic overall rating 8.6 it is a very popular final I think it is one of the easiest to win um, so yeah you can see why it gets an 8.6 I personally scored it a 9 I don't love any of the finals I find them all challenging but this is the least challenging of them hence my highest rating then we have Roll Off, um, another one which was introduced with the winter update. Um, it's a smaller version of Roll Out uh, with uh, two rotating rings that move gradually faster and faster. Also, the slime increases. Um, this is a really challenging one. I'm not a huge fan of it. In general, the fun rating 2.6. Um, it's it's a very difficult level and I, I don't find it that enjoyable, so that's why I rated it low. Um, but generally, it's not that fun. Difficulty is quite high, as I said, because of the speed of the platforms and the way you have to keep controlling the camera, and particularly when the slime is quite high, you have a really small margin for error, so it does get more and more difficult as it goes. Griefability is quite high. As we saw with rollout, griefing is a strong tactic, particularly in this one because the, there is a crown at stake. There are a lot of people griefing on this one, um, and it's hard to avoid if it happens to you. So the overall rating for this one, 5 out of 10. I gave it a 5. Um, I don't hate it, it doesn't come up very often, um, but I'm quite glad of that because it's no, definitely not my favourite of the finals. Then we come on to Royal Fumble, and I'll let, speak the comments here first because they are pretty reflective. Um, Coaster Ronnie says it's the worst round in the entire game, fully agree. Uh, CF Mushroom says hardly ever played it, lucky you! Um, it was actually removed from the ru running in Season 2 because there was a game-breaking glitch where you could jump out of the arena and made it impossible for anyone else to grab the tail. Essentially, this is a, a final that is always played with six players. One person has the tail, everyone else is trying to get it, and it's so frustrating. It takes the tail tag mechanic, which is already frustrating, and magnifies it because there's five players running after one person with a tail. Um, the map is very small and condensed, there's a lot of variation in it, um, but it's not enjoyable. I have not had this final come up since the end of Season 1, uh, when they removed it in Season 2. It is back in Season 3, but I've not had it, and I hope I never have it, because I hate it. It's awful. Fun rating, 1.4. Most of the scores rated it 1. I think the only person who rated it higher than that was because they hadn't played it very often. I think that was Mushroom. Uh, hadn't played it very often, so gave it a 3. It's definitely not a 3 in terms of fun it's awful difficulty 4.6 um, if you've got the tail you've got five players chasing after you specifically um, and it's difficult for them to it's difficult for you to get away from them but it's also difficult for you to be one the one that grabs the tail out of those five um, and particularly in the last few seconds of this round you tend to find that the tail changes hands quite a lot and even if you have had the tail the whole round you often find that you lose it in the very very last moments of the game and that can be super frustrating. Grief ability 3.8. Again, it's it's built into the game, but because of the five on one mechanic, it's not great. Um, overall rating two, and that is massively generous. I gave it a one, and I think it was the average was brought up by uh, Mushroom having not played it very much, rating it fairly middle of the road. This is an awful level. I hate it. I'm so glad it's it's very rare. 
Um, and then finally, in the finals category, we have Thin Ice, which is another one that was introduced with the winter update. Uh, similar to Hexagon, except there are three levels stacked close together, and they dis they kind of dissolve rather than disappear. So they've got a few levels of um, health, as it were, and then they disappear, and you drop down into the slime below. The whole platform is slippery, so it's hard to kind of keep your footing. You have to kind of really consider your movements a lot on this one. Um, fun, 4.2. It is quite a fun one. It's a nice variation on the Hexagon. When it came out, there was a bit of hate to say that it was basically hexagon but with ice and while that is correct i do think it is different enough to warrant it being its own final it's an interesting twist on the mechanic i really enjoy it and i don't it's not one of those ones where i look at it when it comes up and go Ugh. uh so difficulty 3.4 it's not the worst but it can be challenging when again when it gets down to lower numbers of tiles available left um, particularly if they're all in the very broken state uh, one touch of them will make them crumble and it's difficult to stay on so again another one that gets worse the longer that it plays grief ability 3.6 you do tend to see players who will deliberately drill down holes and or there's players that split the arena into two um, there are a lot of griefing tactics and we have seen players that grab and hold a player on the damage tile and then force them to fall into the slime. So there is quite a lot of scope for grief on this one. Overall rating though, 7.8. Even with the grief and the difficulty considered, it is quite a high scoring level. It's just really enjoyable. And as I said, nice, a nice variation on Hexagon. I scored at 8, 7.8, just slightly lower. I can deal with that. Um, so that's all of the levels in the game. Which ones are the best? Which ones are the worst? Luckily, I've collated all of this data and I can tell you. So we're going to look at the best levels first in reverse order. In third place we have Ski Fall. Absolutely fantastic level, as we've said. Really, really enjoyable. Um, it tended to be that when it first came out, a lot of players were frustrated by it because they didn't really... Uh, um, get the way the scoring worked um, and it was something new but I love it and a lot of players really enjoy it. It does help if you do the sliding down the sides tactic but it, you know third best level in the game I can fully agree with that. Second place we have Jump Showdown uh, which is the favourite of the finals as we saw from a lot of the scores. Um, it is uh, in my opinion the best final and in other people's opinions the best final as well easily and then number one should come as no surprise is Rock and Roll. It's just it's just brilliant. We need more team games where the teams are separated and the chance for griefing is less. But Rock and Roll is fantastic. There is no one who sees Rock and Roll comes up and goes, oh, uh, we certainly don't. We cheer whenever that comes up. It's very enjoyable. We tend to look at the numbers and see if there's a number of players divisible by three and hope, hope, hope that Rock and Roll comes up. And as I say, it's more prevalent these days, so we're glad of that. Then looking at the worst levels, the three worst levels in the game uh, based on these ratings, in third place is Wall Guys. So frustrating, um, a difficult level, re relies on cooperation from players that just isn't going to be there because everyone's out for themselves. There is no kind of cooperation expectation in the game and it's definitely not reflected in this level. Second worst, Tail Tag because Tail Tag is horrible and as we've seen the, the tail grabbing mechanic is terrible as well. Not enjoyable and really frustrating. And then number one, the worst final in the game is also the worst level in the game, Royal Fumble. Thank God it doesn't come up very often because it's bloody awful and I hate it <laughs> and I you know I'd rather rage quit than play this level because it's just it's just not fun it's one of two finals that I haven't yet won the other one being roll off but I would I, I just don't care I don't want to win it I don't want to play it I'm, I'm I'm so happy that I've not seen it come up in ages um so that's it for ranking all of the levels in the game do you agree do you disagree well, you should have filled out the form. <laughs> you should have been watching the social channels and filled it out. But not a problem. If you uh, agree with some of these rankings or you disagree with them, let me know in the comments. Just put what you think about a particular level. One you really like, one you really hate. Um, I know that some people really enjoy Slime Climb, whereas other people really, really hate it. It's scored quite middle of the road for us here. Um, but yeah, just let me know in the comments. Special thanks to the people who took part in the survey, were, uh, other than me and Chloe, uh, Coast Rolly, CF Mushroom and LV Peck. Follow them uh, on Twitter using those handles there. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook using the details at the bottom of the page there. 
That's it for this week. Uh, don't forget, if you want to get 10% off your order of dice at beholdersgaze.com, just go to the website, choose your dice, and use the code AaronDice10, and you'll get 10% off. Plus, you get a free D20 with every single order, and uh, the dice are wonderful. They've just recently released uh, 22 new sets for pre-order, including ones that have little blue whales in, little uh, frogs in, some of them have flowers, some of them have mushrooms. There are also class dice, so uh, for Wizard, there's a magic wand in them, for Bard there's like a musical instrument for Barbarian there's an axe they're really really cool I want them all my wallet's screaming because I can't afford any of them but do check them out use the code AaronDice10 you'll get 10% off thanks for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon bye mm -hmm.